Hello, this is Math 125 Pivot Exam 3 Review and I'm Dr. Tatiana Kodorovsky and in this video I will talk about how you would use the sum difference or double angle trigonometric identities to solve various problems. So first, we're going to do number 60. So first of all, all the formulas for the sum identities, the difference identities, the double angle identities, half angle identities, all of that is going to be given as a reference sheet on the exam. So you can use that. You don't have to memorize them. Number 60, you are asked the following. You're asked, suppose that sine of some angle alpha is two-thirds and cosine of some other angle beta is negative one-fourth. You're also given the information that alpha and beta are in quadrant number two. And you're going to, and you're asked to find the following. You're asked to find sine of alpha plus beta. So what's the first thing you do? Well, you look at your formula sheet and you see that sine of alpha plus beta is given by sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times sine of beta. So you need to compute the sine of this new angle of the sum of alpha and beta. And what do you know? Well, there's four parts there. You know sine of alpha. Sine of alpha is given to you. Cosine of beta is given to you. But cosine of alpha and sine of beta, you don't know yet. You can figure this out with information given, and that's what we're going to do now. But we don't uh, know this right off the bat. So first, we're going to figure out what is cosine of alpha. Um, so we want cosine of alpha. Now, there's several ways to do this. Um, one way is to use the trigonometric identity between cosine and sine. So we know that sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha must equal 1. We know sine squared alpha, that's 2 thirds. So we know that 2 thirds squared plus cosine squared alpha equals 1. Well, this is an equation we can solve. This is 1. We know that cosine squared alpha equals 1 minus 4 ninths. This is 5 ninths. This means that cosine of alpha equals plus or minus square root of 5 over 9. So cosine of alpha equals plus or minus square root of 5 over 3. But how do we decide if it's plus or minus? This is where the quadrant information comes from. Remember the signs of our trig functions. The sign is going to be positive in quadrants 1 and 2 and negative in quadrants 3 and 4. Cosine is going to be positive in quadrants um, one and four and negative in quadrant two and three. And so everything, both alpha and beta are in quadrant two right now, so sine is positive and cosine is negative. And this is exactly how we can conclude that cosine of alpha must be negative, so cosine of alpha must be negative radical five 
over 3. So this is one piece of the information that we need. Now for the second piece, we, we want we want sine of beta. And we're going to get it in the same manner. We want sine of beta. Well, we know cosine of beta. And so we also know that cosine squared beta plus sine squared beta is equals to 1. What this means is that cosine squared beta is negative 1 fourth. So negative 1 fourth squared plus sine squared beta equals 1. So this means that sine squared beta equals 1 minus 1 16th. This is 15 over 16. This means sine of beta equals plus or minus square roots of 15 over 16. So that's plus or minus square root of 15 over 4. Now again, we need to choose, is it plus or is it minus? Well, it's in the second quadrant, so it must be plus. So that, that is how we know that sine of beta must be positive radical 15 over 4. This is the last piece of the information that we need. So we come back to our formula and we multiply everything out. Sine of alpha, we're given this. This is 2 thirds times cosine of beta. We're again given this. We knew this from the start of the problem. Negative 1 fourth. Cosine of alpha, we figured out, must be neg negative square root of 5 over 3. And sine of beta must be radical 15 over 4. And now we need to multiply. We need to multiply everything out. This is going to be negative 2 over 12 minus radical of 75 over 12. So this is minus 2 minus radical 75 over 12. And if you want to completely simplify all, all the radicals in the equation, um, this is going to be negative 2 minus 5 times radical 3 over 12. And so the final answer to this problem is this number, negative 2 minus 5 radical 3 over 12. And so again, although we're given the formula for the sum function. We're given that sine of alpha plus beta is sine of alpha times cosine beta plus cosine alpha times sine of beta. We're only given what sine of alpha and cosine beta is. So the first step is to write down the formula for what we want, sine of alpha plus beta, and then figure out what are we missing. In this case, we were missing cosine of alpha and sine of beta. We knew sine of alpha, and we used sine of alpha and the trig identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, to figure out what cosine of alpha was. And at some point, we had to decide, is it the positive one or the negative one? We decided the cosine of alpha must be negative because we're in quadrant 2, and in quadrant 2, cosine is negative. The last piece we needed to know what sine of beta was, so we used the fact that we know cosine of beta to get sine of beta. We again use the trig identity cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. And we again had to make a choice, is sine of beta positive or negative? And we made the choice that sine of beta is positive because beta is in the second quadrant. And then finally, we put the four pieces into our formula and simplified them and got the answer. problem, I'm going to do number 68 from the review. Here you are given that sine of some angle x is 1 over 8. And you're also given that x is in quadrant 1. And you're asked to find three things. You're asked to find 
sine of 2x, cosine of 2x, and tangent of 2x. So all of these are double angle identities. And so the first step is to look at your double identities reference sheet. And you see that, well, sine of 2x is 2 times sine x cosine of x. Um, you see that cosine of 2x, there's three things that can be given for it. Um, you can use any one of them. It doesn't matter. Cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And you have tangent of 2x. Tangent of 2x is given to you by 2, tan two times tangent of x divided by 1 minus tangent square of x. Now one note on the tangent. Tangent, you can use another identity that you know to figure this out. Tangent of 2x is nothing other than sine of 2x over cosine of 2x. So it seems like what we need is to figure out cosine of x because we're given sine of x, we're given sine of x, we know this. What we don't know is cosine of x. We could use, of course, another identity for cosine of 2x where we don't need cosine of x, but we still need to get it for, um, to get sine of 2x. So what we need, what we need to figure out first is we need cosine of x. What is cosine of x? Well, we're given that sine of x is 1 8. And again, we use our favorite trig identity, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Well, sine squared is 1 over 8. So cosine squared plus 1 over 8 squared equals 1. So that means cosine squared equals 1 minus 1 over 64, which is 63 over 64. So we have cosine of x equals 2 plus or minus radical 63 over 8. And which is it plus or minus? Well, it has to be plus because it is in the first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, cosine is positive. So we figured out our missing piece here. Square root of 63 over 64 is radical 63 over 8. We can simplify that later once we put everything together. So now we figured out our missing piece and let's let's continue. So for um, for sine of 2x, this is 2 times 1 over 8 times radical 63 over 8. Multiplying everything out, that is radical 2 that is times radical 63 over 64. We can simplify this a bit. This is 2 times 3 times radical 7 over 64. So this is 3 times radical 7 over 32. The next one we have um, cosine squared. So we have 63 over 64 minus um, sine squared, that's 1 over 64. So we have 62 over 64, which is 31 over 32. And finally, the ratio of these two, we have 3 times radical 7 over 32 divided by 31 over 32. That is 3 times radical 7 over 31. So these are our final answers. Sine of 2x is 3 times radical 7 over 32. 
cosine of 2x is 31 over 32, and tangent of 2x is 3 times radical 7 over 31, and this is the final answer. And again, just like with the sum problem, we first needed to write down the identities that we're going to use, the identity for sine of 2x, cosine of 2x, and tangent of 2x, and then we needed to figure out what was missing. Well, we knew what sine of x was, but we needed to know what cosine of x is, and we used the trig identity, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, to get the answer for what cosine of x must be, and then we plugged it into the given formulas, and we got our answer. The next question is number 71. It asks us to simplify the following expression. Simplify 4 times sine of pi over 8 times cosine of pi over 8. Now we're not told which identity to use, but the most useful identity here is the sine double angle identity. And the only reason is because it's similar in structure to what was happening. We have sine of an angle times cosine of the very same angle. So we might want to use this identity, sine of 2x equals 2 sine of x times cosine of x. We want to simplify this expression. Again, pi over 8 is 22.5 degrees. We don't really know readily what sine of that angle is or what cosine of angle is. Plugging it into a calculator is not going to give a nice answer. So we want to use the double angle identity that we know. And what I'm going to do is, in the identity that we know, we're going to plug in x equals pi over 8 because that's what's going to make my identity look the most like what I need to simplify. So if I do that, I get sine of 2 times pi over 8 equals 2 times sine of pi over 8 times cosine of pi over 8. Now, it seems like I almost got what I wanted, but there's a 4 in front of my expression that I need to simplify, and I have a 2 here. So what I can do is I can multiply both sides of this expression by 2. And I have 4 times sine of pi over 8 times cosine of pi over 8. And now I have the expression that I wanted to simplify. And so this expression, 4 times sine of pi over 8 times cosine of pi over 8, according to the double angle identity, equals to 2 times sine of 2 times pi over 8. I can simplify this a bit. This is 2 times sine of pi over 4. Sine of pi over 4 is something that I know. Sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. And so finally, the answer is radical 2. You can leave your answer like this. This is already a simplified form. But the most simple, uh, the most uh, simplification here is just radical 2, since sine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2.